everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am here with Dr. Barbara Yon. She's a consultant in the COPD Foundation, and she has agreed to spend some time with me today to talk to you a little bit about um, COVID and uh, COPD. And we have a Q&A webinar that's going to be happening at the end of July, and we just wanted to give you a little preview of what that might be like. So we've had some people submit some questions to us already, and I thought it might be good to spend some little face-to-face -face time with Dr. Yon and have her answer a couple of these questions, as we will try to do on the Q&A at the end of the month. So, Dr. Yon, thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me, and I look forward to this. It's always interesting to know what people are thinking and what they're wondering, so I'm glad we can do this. I am too, thank you. And I think it's good to spend this face-to-face -to -face time together. Yes. Um, so the first question that came in, I think this is probably one that other people are feeling as well. This is a good one. Um, this person says, I haven't been out of my apartment in so long. I'm afraid that I might breathe in the virus while I'm in the hallway or in the elevator. I know about wearing masks, but I'm still afraid. Is that a reasonable fear? Well, it is a very common fear, and yes, it's reasonable, but I think that we can approach it and do something about it. I am so glad that he or she mentioned the masks. Those are so important. So, especially out in a hallway, if you're wearing a mask and you keep social distance, which we know is about six feet apart, you should be in good shape. Now, I know people have a little more concern about elevators because elevators can be like sardine cans where you're just all together. So I would make a point of trying to wait until you get an elevator where there's nobody or maybe only one other person and you try to keep your social distance and you wear your mask. You hope the other person has a mask on too. What happens if the elevator stops on a floor and, you know, 10 people get on? Well, I personally would probably get off and then wait and try to have another elevator. Of course, you'd love to take the stairs if that's possible. And maybe if you only have one or at the most two floors, that is. But if you live on the seventh floor, that's pretty hard. You're going to have to use the elevator. You may also think about times to go up and down in the elevator that you know are unlikely to be prime times. And you probably have lived in the building long enough to figure out what prime times are and you avoid the prime times for elevator use. But walking up and down the hall, there's a lot of opportunities to at least get out and feel like you have a little different scenery and maybe there's even a window at the end of the hall, go down and look out that window for a while. So this is common, we really do understand, but I think it is safe with the masks and social distancing to get out in an area that you feel is controlled. Thank you very much. I think that's helpful. You know, I do think that people are feeling a little confined, um, a little isolated, and, um, you know, we want people to be outside and get fresh air and sunshine and those kinds of things. Those are really helpful um, for our well-being mentally and physically. So, yes, I think it is important to be outside and get out of your, you know, your four walls. I do too, and I'm hoping that's what they're going to use the elevator for, is to be able right. to go then outside. But I know if you're afraid to even get in the elevator, it's pretty hard to get outside. But please, right. outside is one of the safest places. Again, of course, masks and social distancing, but outside, you're not going to have that same air recirculating. Good point. That's right. That's right. Well, um, I have another question for you. Uh, this person says, I had some suspicious places show up when I had a colonoscopy last year. It is time for me to have my follow-up. Is it safe for me to schedule that test with COVID-19 still being out there? I have COPD and emphysema and diabetes, among other things. I think this is a really great question, not just about the colonoscopy, 
but about health maintenance and the care that you need on a regular basis. Even uh, the flu shot, for example, people are thinking, should I even get that? It is really important that things you need and would usually do to protect your health, like this person's colonoscopy follow-up or your hemoglobin A1C for the diabetes or your flu shot or any other immunizations or things you regularly get, it is time to now explore those. I think that this person specifically, I would call wherever the colonoscopy is to be done and ask them, are they open? What kind of precautions are they taking? Uh, and explore with them a little bit what they're doing. If they say, yes, you know, patients are waiting out in their car, for example, until we call them in one at a time. We're spreading our appointments apart. We're doing the colonoscopy in a room that is thoroughly cleaned between, uh, and we wait a period of time. Everybody's wearing personal protective equipment. We want you to wear a mask when you come in. All of those things would make me feel quite comfortable that they have done all of the preparation and they're doing prevention uh, when you do come in for your procedure. So that would make me comfortable going in for the procedure. And for your routine things like your flu shot, you can go to your doctor or nurse's office or you can go to the pharmacy and get it. Uh, sometimes there's no line at the pharmacy and there's nobody around. Other times it's very crowded. If it's very crowded, I'm gonna turn around and go back and come another time. Uh, but I think there are many places. You may want for your health maintenance and whether it's time to get your next spirometry, your next hemoglobin A1C for your diabetes or whatever it is, talk to your doctor or whoever's office and ask them, can I come in and do this? Can we do this with telehealth? Some of the checkups we can do with telehealth. Uh, if not, can I come in and just get my laboratory testing or my imaging testing done? Uh, for example, I just scheduled my annual mammogram, but I talked to them about what they're doing before I decided, yes, it's safe. So a little exploration, but please don't continue to delay routine maintenance and health care that you need and follow-up exams because the long-term impact of ignoring those or just not doing them can be quite negative for your health long-term. That is true. You know, that, that is very true. We don't want to put things off. You know, that old saying, you know, a stitch in time saves nine. I think that applies here too. You know, we don't want to put things off for the future because um, things can become worse over time. Um, and something else I think people need to consider is a lot of these doctor's offices, hospitals certainly, um, while there are sick people there coming in and out, none of these places want for you to pick up the COVID-19 virus there. They're going to do everything they can do to keep you as safe as they possibly can when you come in for your appointment. Um, but it is a good idea to call them and say, look, I have these underlying conditions. I'm concerned. Can you help me um, feel better about coming in? Um, and I, I, I like that idea, calling them ahead of time and, and so you can feel confident when you go. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, and I think it's important to realize that a lot of these things are not done in the hospital setting. And I do understand right. there are still a lot of sick people in the hospital with COVID and they're the hospitals are taking a lot of restrictions and the hospitals are actually trying to move these routine maintenance things out of the areas where there are sick people. So they're trying to move them to outpatient centers uh, and to offices and to other things. So 
you don't even have to think that you necessarily are going to the hospital for these things. Now, if you do need to go to the hospital, you're having chest pain, you're so short of breath, you can't, you know, breathe. Please don't delay that either, uh, but just let them know you have these other conditions and they're going to do, as you said, their absolute best. They don't want any more people with COVID-19 either. <laughs> so we're all, you know, aiming right. for the same right. thing. Good health care, good health maintenance, prevention, and that includes prevention of COVID-19. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Yan. I appreciate your time that you took to spend with us today. Well, thank you. And I look forward to answering some more of those questions at the end of the month. Great. Thank you. And if you do have other questions that you would like for Dr. Yan and some of our other experts to answer, you can send them to statecaptain at copdfoundation.org. Thanks so much.